from an infrastructure uh, type perspective, what you will commonly see among cloud uh, storage providers is that they're almost always some sort of multi-node configuration. Uh, sometimes that node uh, could have a separate processing node and storage node. Uh, and in other cases, the storage node and the uh, storage itself are in the same uh, physical unit. Uh, and then the, there's software that's layered on top of this that handles all the different features and functionalities that we'll talk about in a second. The key differentiator is the, is the dependency between those nodes. Uh, there's essentially a loosely coupled and tightly coupled uh, offering. The loosely coupled offering, each node is, 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 is an independent standalone entity and does not require the other nodes to be available. The limitations here could be scalability in that you're limited to the file size that you can fit inside that internal unit, although that, those units should scale quite large. And then also you're limited to some extent to the performance of the individual nodes. In a tightly coupled relationship, each node needs the other node to be there. Uh, the data is scattered across the nodes. Uh, this is helpful to increase performance and increase scalability, uh, but you do have this uh, interdependent relationship between the nodes. So again, something to explore in, as far as the differences between the two and see what makes the most sense for your organization. Finally, in cloud storage infrastructure, what should you look for? The, the key thing, of course, is reliability. That, based on the type of data you have. If this is backup or archive data, instant online access may not be the top priority for you just as long as you can get to that data within some reasonable period of time. So it's something that you have to measure for the data set you're looking at. Of course, if you're in the process of being sued and you can't get to your archive data, that might not be a very popular uh, situation. So factor in all the different uh, scenarios that could cause you to need access to the data and how soon you would need to respond with data. Secondly is redundancy. Uh, just like anybody else's system, these storage systems are uh, prone to failure and having a redundant system somewhere else uh, is obviously a very good thing. Some of the uh, products can replicate two and three and four times so you have multiple uh, cases of redundancy. The third thing to look for is what we call dispersion, which is the capability that on a block level or sometimes on a file level to automatically disperse a file uh, based on a geography setting. So again, going back to my example of if you broadcast your latest movie, you would want that movie to be accessible from the closest node point. So if I'm in uh, Southern California and I want to access uh, your movie, I would want to be accessing it from the node that's closest to Southern California. Conversely, if somebody's in Europe and is accessing that same movie, they would want to be able to access it from somewhere close to the uh, to them. Uh, and then also you'd want to factor into that as well if a particular node gets overwhelmed from a request standpoint, the ability to uh, serve that file up from another node. Products that offer dispersion tend to have obviously the capability to move these files around to understand the the geographic significance of where they are and as well as the load significance. The fourth point is scalability, especially again in an archive case you're looking to be able to store uh, certainly terabytes and in many, ca many cases uh, petabytes of information. So that scalability becomes critical. In a movie situation it may not be that critical for one particular uh, movie that you make uh, but compared, when you also factor in that that is also going to be housing lots of other content, scalability t tends to become a factor again. So again, what you're looking for with scalability is, to, is the ability to start small and then grow to essentially limitless numbers. Uh, we think that that's a, a key thing. Um, and part of the challenge that you have with uh, doing an internal cloud is uh, especially from some of the providers, is you have to start at a relatively high number, uh, maybe 25, 50 terabytes, depending on the, on the client. If you have that up front, that's not a problem. Uh, but if you only have four or five terabytes, then maybe starting with a public cloud might be a better idea. And then finally, and, and maybe most, most obvious, is cost effectiveness. You're not going to invest in this type of technology unless there's a, a compelling business case to do so. 
so the, the price per gigabyte clearly becomes important, especially in the uh, service provider and public cloud market. Um, and so you're looking for as minimal short-term costs as you can get. And again, of course, public clouds or uh, the shared sort of cloud services will be the least expensive initially. But also in those scenarios, make sure you factor in what the long-term cost is going to be because that'll be a challenge as well. So going forward and kind of looking out into the future, uh, here's where we uh, see some key uh, factors in sort of the state of the cloud storage market today. The, the first is that the current economic situation should spur cloud storage use. Um, cloud, has been, cloud storage has been an interesting topic uh, for us to track in the late spring of last year, it was very, very popular. Everybody was talking about it. We were getting a lot of questions about it, uh, both from suppliers and end users. And that continued for part of the summer, and then it sort of disappeared for a little bit. Uh, with the recent uh, poor economic news, uh, we've seen a return uh, significantly in the interest in cloud storage. So we think this uh, the down economy is going to drive further interest and uh, further use of the cloud. Again, with lower budgets, you have less money up front to invest, so doing something on a monthly basis uh, becomes much more appealing as a result. The, the second thing uh, in the state of the market is there, there needs to be an improvement in getting data to the cloud in some sort of an automated fashion. Some companies have really mastered this quite well. Uh, others are still struggling with it. We think that uh, the cloud providers delivering this type of service or software companies themselves taking advantage of it are really the uh, key in, in total cloud uh, or more cloud adoption. Uh, we, we think that companies like um, Kofio and some of the backup applications will be using this uh, more frequently. This will allow you to have an option, if you will, to move or archive to cloud. So the cloud could be a fourth or fifth tier in your overall data management strategy. And then overall what we see happening I think for most clients is that they'll start with some sort of a public cloud trial, see if it fits for them, and then from there they'll decide to either expand the use of the public offering uh, or pull the technology internally. If part of your decision process is going to be to pull the technology internally, even if you're not sure that's going to happen, we recommend as you're talking to cloud service, or cloud storage service providers or service providers that you ask them and understand what type of technology they're using and infrastructure they're using internally. If it's something that's readily available that can be then purchased and used for yourself, that could be an ideal strategy from a transition standpoint. So again, companies like uh, uh, Bycast and uh, CleverSafe and, and companies like that, Periscale, would be a, a good examples of companies that would look uh, attractive there. On the other hand, if you're going to do a cloud trial and you think you're just going to stay public the whole time, then some of the more mature uh, cloud providers uh, like Amazon and Nervonix and uh, Google and some of these others uh, might be worth the consideration. So, but. In all in all, we think that public cloud is, from a trial standpoint, is generally the way that most people will start. The exception would be that if you already have, so let's say, 25 to 50 terabytes that you believe that you're ready to archive and, uh, and move to some sort of, a, of infrastructure, then looking at a private cloud might become immediately attractive because you can control the security concerns and uh, data availability concerns that you might have uh, behind giving some of your uh, data crown jewels, if you will, uh, to another technology. So that concludes our webcast for today. If you have any questions, again, please email us at info at storage-switzerland.com. We'll make uh, every attempt to respond to those questions as fast as possible. And then uh, any other questions that you have or comments on the webcast, please email us at the same address. Again, thank you for your time today and please uh, visit our website for future uh, publications.